York, though, because the statuettes are being made here. Yes, and a lot of the actors live in New York. Are you ready? You can open your eyes. It's so true. Lupita Nyong'o, Oscar winner, she has a new passion project. I got to talk to her about that. I'm also wondering where all the stars are going to be going after the Oscars because I'm hearing about all these crazy after parties. I cannot wait to see the photos the next day of Leonardo DiCaprio finally holding up his Oscar. I'm giving you 10 minutes. How stressful was it for us to have to pick out our Oscar gowns in less than... Whoa, 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 Jen, let me remind you again, we are not going to the Oscars. Megan and Simone, are you ready? My face is feeling like a little tight now. Yeah, I can't smile at it. What are you guys doing? What do you mean? I've been looking for you forever. We have to go. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Right behind you, Megan. The countdown to the Oscars is on. This is Studio 5. I'm Jen Lammers, Simone Boyce. We have our girl Megan back here who's getting us ready for the big show tomorrow night. I love watching the Oscars, don't get me wrong, but I get even more excited to see everyone work it on that red carpet. Same here, and one red carpet queen in particular always slays Lupita Nyong'o. Yes. She's already won an Oscar for her performance in 12 Years a Slave, but she's about to make her Broadway debut in a new play called Eclipse. It's about a tight-knit community of African women, and she can't wait to share this story with you. So Lupita, you've seen your name on an Oscar, but seeing your name on a Broadway marquee, is that a different sensation? Yeah, I would say. Are you ready? You can open your eyes. <laughs> there's no pressure when you go and see your name on a Broadway marquee. And there's nothing like that when you actually see it live, and it's like a New York street, you know, and there goes your name and your face in this play that you love so much. This being my debut on Broadway and it being a powerful female African story yeah. is, is something that means a lot to me. I am in the business of trying to tell stories that otherwise we don't really hear and this is one of those. Why do you call this play your passion project? Well because I first I understudied the role I'm currently playing, the girl, when it was being done at the Yale Repertory Theater. It was the very first thing I've ever understudied in my life. It was my very first gig at the Yale School of Drama. And I just remember being in rehearsals and feeling so blessed that this play existed, that I got to witness it getting made. And so to be able, all these years later, to be in it, first of all at the public and then now on Broadway, I mean, I would have done it just about anywhere, you know? I would have done it in my living room if it <laughs> came to that. And now you're making history. This is so cool. Female playwright, cast, and director? Yes, this is the first play on Broadway to be all female from writing to performance. And that also feels like a, 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 a blessed milestone. And the word feminism has kind of been tossed around when, when people are speaking about this show. What do you think, how do you think that word fits into the context of, of the, the story that these women are telling? That is a very good question, a very deep question. I don't know whether I have a, a response to it, except to say that this is a real celebration of the resilience of women in unimaginable circumstances. No! As you progress in your career in Hollywood, does it get easier or more difficult to find an authentic community of women? Ooh. Ooh. Um, I've been very lucky along the way because in every production that I have worked on thus far, I have met real, solid women. I mean, there's, there's been really amazing women along the way. So, yeah, that's my truth. Squad goals <laughs> right there. <laughs> Lupita, you look ravishing in purple. Everything you wear, I don't know how you do it. You just kill it every single time. Oh, but you. I have to know, do you own one pair of sweatpants? Like, I do. do. You do? Yes, no I way. do. Oh, yeah. Multiple pairs? Uh, yes, I own sweatpants. When do you wear sweatpants? When I'm working out. <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. Well, you look incredible. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Well, Lupita is always at the top of my best dress list. I cannot wait to see what she wears tomorrow night to yes. the 88th Annual Academy Awards. And joining us to talk all things Oscars, Carrie Cottett from MTV 2's Joking Off and Ooh. Mr. Rob Shooter from <laughs> The Naughty Gossip. Guys, we got to start with this controversy that we've been talking about for so long now. Not enough representation for African-American actors in this year's nominee list or last year's. Yeah, it's a massive, massive subject. Everybody's talking about it. Sources are telling Naughty Gossip that tomorrow night, Chris has ripped up his monologue and he started from fresh. He has rewritten the top of the show and he's going to address the issue right away. So before the show even starts, he's going to get in there and set the tone. And yeah. how do you think he's exactly going to handle it? Well, I think as a comedian, and you yeah. probably can talk more about this, but as a comedian, I think he's going to make fun of this. I think that's probably the best way to handle it, make a few jokes. He's a stand-up comedian. I think if Chris Rock wasn't hosting the Oscars, who are they going to replace him with? Neil Patrick Harris or Billy <laughs> Crystal? It's <laughs> like we're over that. Plus Let's point oh, yeah, out, I mean, he's getting paid seven hundred thousand dollars, oh, about that amount of money to host. Yeah, it's a right. massive, massive gig. This isn't the two thousand dollars you get for the Tony Awards. This yeah, is like a massive no. payday. So he and wants now to he do can it. be the mouthpiece for that frustration that that's just sort of simmering underneath the surface at the awards ceremony. Many yeah, sure. people, Will and Jada, were probably the, the the main focus behind this, trying to get people to boycott mm -hmm. or not to attend. His camp is saying it's actually more powerful for him to show up. To show up and do it because he needs to be able to speak to what's going on, and he's a comedian. Like we are the last truth. <laughs> Tell his love, sorry. Well, yeah. <laughs> what do you think Chris Rock is going to say on stage? I think Chris Rock is going to come out uh, in a sea of white faces and just be like, oh, well, thank you for inviting the one black person here. I see <laughs> y'all made y'all diversity quota. Thank you. <laughs> like, he has to say something straight off the top, hit it on the head, in their face, and make it comfortable for the rest of the night. Do you think he's yeah. going to move on after that? No. I think he's going <laughs> to tag it up. I think it's going to be white guilt central. I think he's going to bring them to the point where people want to give their awards to him. Like, take yeah. it, Chris. Take it. <laughs> you know, when she did and come to the Academy Awards, <laughs> Wendy, Wendy Williams had a really funny line. She said when they give out the best actor award, they're going to say, which one of you white men won the Oscar? So it's going to do the whole show, I think. Well, I know that we'll all be watching to see if a certain someone gets his Oscar finally, Leonardo DiCaprio. It, it's How amazing. We're talking to him like a veteran. That. He's still a yeah. pretty young man. I think we forget he started this so young. He was 19 or so uh, in Gilbert Grape when he started out. So now it's been a lot of years. This is his year. He's got it. This Take it to, to the bank. It. Yeah. This has to be yeah. this year. It's like the Revenant. No one even knew what a Revenant was. We <laughs> thought it was the Revenant Al Sharpton. <laughs> right. Thank you for teaching me new words, Leo. I'm rooting for you. <laughs> what they went through, what he went through for this Oscar, it's going to be. Yeah. It's going to be so sweet. He was crawling through the snow, ate real bison liver, slept in a horse carcass, maybe got raped by a bear. I mean, all of the above, that, that has to get you an Oscar. We know, living in New York, Leo loves to go to One Oak and the cool clubs. We yeah. see him there all the time with, with the cap on. He's not been there, so I think his people have told him, his representatives, mm. take it down a notch, play after the Oscars, which yeah. is why everybody's dying to go to Leo's Oscar party because that's where it's going to be crazy. And you know, he can always say, right? He can always say, well, you guys are taking home the Oscars. I'm still taking home the supermodels. So, yeah. so we need to talk about these parties. This okay? is all you care whatever about. I love happens, I'm a DJ, so whatever happens after the Oscars, I need to talk about it. what's going on. The party that everybody wants to go to is the Vanity Fair after party. An Oscar gets you in automatically. That's literally okay. the golden ticket. However, if you don't get win an Oscar, you have to be invited. If you are invited and you RSVP, they give you a time slot. So everybody doesn't arrive together. So if you're very, very popular and fantastic, you get the 10 to 10.30 time slot, the 10.30 to 11, the 11 to 11.30, so it's a half hour mm -hmm. time slot. The actors and the actresses that they really don't want there sort of get the two in the morning slot. But don't people party all night? No? They, they wanted, do. I, I didn't know people wanted to go places early. I <laughs> they, thought it was yeah, like a late thing. They no? Do. No, they, the Oscars are finished by about okay. 9, 10 o'clock out there, so they go to the Elton John party. Well, always fun. Up, they need to go Elton out. 2 is really open to have reality stars, so that's the party where the Kardashians Owen, the Vanity Fair is still a little bit snobby, still a little bit posh, but what's the best part of that party? They have a truck serving in and out burgers. Yes. There are more people lined yeah, up than those. Now, I don't know, I want to document it because I never knew that celebrities ate. <laughs> I don't know that I've ever seen them eat. Like, I've seen them at restaurants, but have we ever seen them eat? You know what I mean? Something that is not found in nature, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm all, I want to see it happen. Vanity Fair told me I could come by it 
uh, as the cleanup crew. The next day, <laughs> like 10 a.m. Right. and just custodian. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's your time slot, 10 a.m. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, yeah. that's where all the secrets are, are held. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's where the, the evidence on the floor. You're still saying that Leonardo DiCaprio's party is going to be the place to be. If he wins, if he wins, he's going to win. Has, if he's not if he canceled, it's going to yeah. be quiet. I night. hope they don't have a Victoria's <laughs> Secret shoot the next day because those girls are going to be a little hungover. Carrie and Rob, thank you so much for gossiping with us. It was fun. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. It's fun. Thank you. Oscar gossip to Oscar Gold. We actually, with with our computer, went back to the original statue from 1927. Inside the warehouse in our area where the Oscar... Your new Nissan now. Shop your local Nissan store and choose Nissan.com. Welcome back, everybody. Oscar Sunday. Can't believe it's already here again. It's one of my favorite days of the year. Yes, it is all about that little golden man who travels so far to get in the hands of those Oscar winners. Little known fact, the statue is actually made right in our area, just about an hour north of the city. So I got to take a tour of the warehouse to see how it's all done. <laughs> Oscar. He's film's highest honor, but before he's clutched in the hands of the world's most talented actors, he must travel 3,000 miles, all the way from a warehouse right here in New York. You see the bottom of the ingots are getting red, and, and, and they'll get up and they'll melt, and the metal will go down. From a solid brick of bronze, melted 2,000 degrees, and crafted into that iconic statuette, for the last 33 years, Oscar's been made in Chicago. But this year, the production has moved to the Pollock Talix Fine Art Foundry in Rock Tavern, New York. It is a great honor, and, and we're going to make them better than they've ever been made before. So what, if any? Anything our owner Dick Pollock and his team doing differently. We actually, with with our computer, went back to the original statue from 1927, scanned it, and then blended it with the computer with with the latest with last year's version. Keeping it local, Oscar then heads to Brooklyn, where he's plated with 24 karat gold. Each category is kept top secret, even from the ones who make the award. At the actual award ceremony, the uh, recipient brings their statue to a sort of nameplate engraving station. They hand us their statue, and we affix their, you know, their nameplate to the uh, to the trophy and pass it right back to them. To Pollock, the idea that some of the most famous actors in the world will be holding the award he's made is its own honor. A sense of pride that comes Sunday night, a piece of the apple will be among the stars on stage. It seemed like a really big deal. And you know what? I was right. And I... They're the songs we love to hear. Across the distance. A look back at the music that made Oscar history. It's family game night. Okay, do you have any queens? Yeah, two big ones. Okay. On Modern Family, Monday night starting at 7 on Fox 5. From record snow to record warmth. It's been a winter of extremes. So what does this mean for the coming spring? The ultimate forecast, Monday at 10. more than sleek lines and aggressive styling to attract some drivers. 328 horsepower that handles like this certainly qualifies as more. Lease the all-wheel drive Infiniti Q50 for $309 a month. Visit your tri-state Infiniti retailer. Your heart loves omega-3s. But there's a difference between the omega-3s in fish oil and those in Mega Red Krill Oil. Unlike fish oil, Mega Red is easily absorbed by your body, which makes your heart, well, mega happy. Happier still, Mega Red is proven to increase omega-3 levels in 30 days. Mega Red, the difference is easy to absorb. Honda knows just because you're looking for a utility vehicle doesn't mean you're looking for adventure. But sometimes, adventure finds you. That's why these vehicles have available all-wheel drive to help you tackle the road outside with interiors 
to keep you comfortable inside. It's more than just utility. It's modern utility. Nothing compares to a Honda. KBB.com's best value brand. Building the only truck with the best fuel economy. Over a 10,000 pound towing capacity. And an award winning engine takes guts. Icing up the competition, that's the glory. Get a great deal during Ram Truck Month. Well qualified current lessees of competitive vehicles get a low mileage lease on the 2016 Ram 1500 Express Quad Cab for $199 a month. Right, it is the weekend. I am so happy. This is the weekend. I recognize this song. This is from the Fifty Shades of Grey right. soundtrack, right? Earned it. This actually earned itself an Oscar nomination. It's something that you don't realize. Some of your favorite songs and the biggest songs actually come from movie soundtracks. Yep. Do you want me to start singing anything off of the Titanic soundtrack? I'll sing it with you. <laughs> or The Bodyguard? Yes, that too. Is. <laughs> so many classic soundtracks. Another really good one this year, straight out of content. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Now let's take a look at some of the biggest soundtracks of all time. Now I had the time of my life. No, I never felt like this before. Yes, I the mood is in the music. Whether it is melodically placed in the background of a scene to set the tone or in sync with the actions of a character to dramatize the events taking place. And I. The soundtrack is vital to the overall production of the film. Billboard senior editor Jim Aswad breaks down the distinctive traits that make each one harmoniously unique. There's something about the movie that's communicated by the soundtrack, whether it's something like Purple Rain, where the movie is built around the music, something like Oh Brother Where Art Thou, where it introduces people to a kind of music they're not really familiar with that's great, or even one like The Bodyguard, which is basically a Whitney Houston album with some other songs sort of lumped onto it. The Bodyguard soundtrack has sold 45 million copies worldwide since its release in 1992. It is the highest selling soundtrack of all time, and as far as all album sales, it is at the top of that list as well. It may not have been the biggest selling album of all time, but it was one of them. Saturday Night Fever soundtrack, technically a soundtrack, not a Bee Gees album, even though there were tons of Bee Gees songs on it, they oversaw it, but there were songs by other artists on there, so it's technically a compilation. That was the biggest selling album of all time for a while there, uh, up until a point in the 80s, up until Thriller came along. What makes a good soundtrack? Soundtracks take all different kinds of shapes. Um, some will have the score music, the incidental music from the film, with a couple of singles, which was the case with Titanic. Uh, the Bodyguard was more, was more song-oriented, but what you had in the case of both of them is you had one song, a signature song from the movie that encapsulated all the emotion of the movie, especially the Titanic with, uh, with My Heart Will Go On. All right. The melody of the song, the way that it would drop in and out of the movie, you know, the way it was integrated into the film, the way that the song itself really reflected both the hope and the tragedy of the film, I mean, that's sort of the perfect storm right there. In 1997, Titanic, music from the motion picture, rose to the top of the charts in nearly two dozen territories, selling over 30 million copies. It is the highest selling primarily orchestral soundtrack ever. Yay! At tomorrow's Oscar Awards, the winners in the categories for Best Original Song and Best Original Score will take home a statuette. And you deserve it, the way you work it. The Weeknd scored his first number one on Billboard with Earned It from the Fifty Shades of Grey soundtrack, which is up for Best Original Song. If I were going to bet, I don't think it's going to win. Till it happens to you. I think Lady Gaga's song, If It Happens to You, has a stronger chance because what you see often, especially with best song, is if it's attached to an issue. And when you've got songs like that, you get the voters saying, like, you know, this is about something. We want to get behind it. Sparkle. I'm looking for sparkle. Next, Jen, Megan, and I duke it out in a race to get red carpet ready. Welcome back, guys. We are at the Lord and Taylor flagship store because even though our invite to the Oscars unfortunately got lost in the mail, we can still pretend. Totally lost. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Well, we have the music, we have the movies, now we just have to complete the entire look. 
with the gowns, and who better to ask than our friend, style expert, George Brescia. Hi, George. Hi, girls. Thank you for being our guiding lights today. My pleasure. Couldn't George. think of three more beautiful candidates in my life. I'm oh, so stop. nervous about this. This is why we need you. Expert. Expert. You are not nervous. Yes, I am. I promise. All right, I've got you. All right, listen. I'm going to give you some categories, some things to inspire you, right? So when you're seeing a red carpet, we're looking for an embellishment. We've got metallic and we've got color. I think it's an opportunity for you to really pull out all the stops and just think about what you want to say. You know, do you want to look chic? Do you want to look sexy? Do you want to look glamorous? Think about your assets, your best body parts. Do you want to show your back? Do you want to show your arms? Do you want to show your legs? And just use those things to pick out a dress that you think is just going to make you look and feel, most importantly, feel fantastic. I'm giving you 10 minutes. 10? 10. That is not nearly long enough. <laughs> Mr. Brescia. Oh, come on. <laughs> Ten minutes and to find a dress and come back and then we'll talk about it. Okay. Can you do it? You can do it. As long as the talking is so. nice, I think I can handle it. I always Be, come with love. On us. Big love. <laughs> Big love. All right, ready? On your mark, get set, go. Right, I'm going this way. I love color, so I'm going to try for some color. You know when you're like in a rush and you can't... You can't read things properly. Good luck, Jen. Oh, yeah, thanks. No idea where to start. <laughs> What's a classical dress? Ooh. Look at this, a little bit of red drama. No, I don't know. I haven't read in the blue. Jen, what are you really? doing over what? here? What? This, this is where I'm you shopping. You stay away from my territory, okay? No, this, this is where this is my this is okay, my Okay, how about you, you go that way, way and you go I'll this go way? Okay. In the fitting rooms. Here I go. I mean, I leave you alone, and look what happens. I mean, okay. Do we, do we even do a who wore? I don't want to do a who wore no. best. There's no who wore best. Simone, you and I are going to go do shoes and jewelry. Yes. You two duke it out and see who gets to wear the dress. Yeah. Come Good on, luck, love. ladies. Mm. All right. Me, you, cage match. Best emoji wins. 